another episode of Investor's Playbook. As always, you have your co-hosts, Deshaun and Cornell. Cornell, man, how you feeling, bro? We 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 got we got a new president. <laughs> it's official. Donald Trump has won the presidency. How you feeling, bro? Uh, <clears throat> I'm still feeling good, man. Uh, you know, it, it wasn't my preference, but like I've been saying. I feel like we have to find opportunity in all situations. And I feel like even though the president that I didn't, I personally didn't want uh, to win one, I feel like I can still uh, thrive in this environment for sure. Um, I know that there are a lot of people that are just like over it. If you mention anything about Donald Trump, it's like they're trying to they're trying to cancel you. And I understand that it, it, it's a hard topic. But at the end of the day, we got to continue to move forward. How about yourself? Oh nah, man, that's very well said. And I'm going to echo those exact words. Um, that is not the candidate that I voted for either. Um, but like we always say on the show, you have to, you have to move and make sure that you have what you need in order to succeed, right? Whatever, whatever the outcome would have been, but we knew that there was a chance that, uh, we would have Donald Trump as president. So with that being the case, we just now have to move <laughs> accordingly. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, with, but to, with to, lighten, him, to lighten up the mood, I have a joke. Okay, <laughs> let's hear it. All right, you ready? All right. So, what do you call a shark that's interesting? A shark that's interesting? Mm hmm. A shrink? I don't know. Uh, Look, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> a, a, a loan shark. A loan shark. Get it? Because, you know, loans have interest. Oh. And it's a shark. It's oh. interesting. Oh, yeah. Hey. Um... <laughs> Wait, I have another one. I have another one. Hey, okay. All right. <laughs> last one. Last one. All right. Let's see. Why did the dollar break up with the quarter? Uh, something with 75. I don't know. Because it made sense. Ah. Ah, because it made sense. That's actually a better one than the loan shark. I, I like that one better than the loan shark. Uh, I thought both, both of them were good. pretty bad, though. They're both pretty bad. They're, they're, both, they're both pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> but... If I had to go with one that was better, uh, the sense one, I think, is is, is uh, the better of the two. Um, wow. Yeah, you're, you're going to tell really great dad jokes one day. <laughs> <laughs> you got to work you gotta work on it a little bit more. You know, work on it a I appreciate more. that. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, but no, nah, in that same sentiment, uh, knowing that we now have Donald Trump as our president, um, what are some of the changes that we've seen in just a week, right? What are some of the what are some of the biggest changes that you've seen in this past week, right? And I know we've seen the same thing, but we de we definitely got to talk about it. Man, this this man hasn't even sworn in yet, and the stock market went ballistic. Uh, over the past Friday wasn't as as crazy, but Wednesday and, and Thursday. Uh, huge gains in the stock market, specifically with uh, Tesla and uh, other tech stocks. I know that with a huge spike in the market, I uh, sold most of my short term plays mm -hmm. because I am unaware of what's going to happen in the short term. Right. I, I, I do think that in the long term, uh, technology is going to continue to thrive, especially with AI going on. NVIDIA is still making this run. Uh, but I don't know when the turnaround is going to happen. And when it comes to Bitcoin, I feel like the super cycle for Bitcoin was going to happen regardless, because as we know, in, in, during the summer, Bitcoin had the Bitcoin having occurred. So every four years, Bitcoin has had a huge increase in price. So I I'm expecting the same for this year uh during the winter what about you what are your thoughts um no, i mean definitely recognizing the same exact thing the the 
the Dow Jones sword, the SPY sword, or the S&P 500, all of the index funds grew significantly since Wednesday. Like you said, it slowed down a bit on Friday, but Wednesday and Thursday, it was, I mean, it was crazy. I mean, people were just, you know, throwing their money into these stocks and making the, the index funds grow as fast as they did. Um, I think that with Trump now being present, a lot of people are looking at this as an opportunity to invest in the stock market heavily. Um, and I will start, well, I guess I've already started, but I will say that um, as you watch our show and as we talk about investing, we got to make sure and understand that any type of investment, you want to make sure that you do your due diligence, okay? We give our opinion on the current state of the stock market, all right? We are not financial advisors. We are not advising or directing or telling anyone to do anything specifically. Uh, we are a hub of information. Always do your own research. Always double check and make sure that the investment fits what you're looking for and your goals prior to diving into any investment. Investing is risky. So you got to make sure that you understand your level of risk when it comes to investing in the stock market. But yes, with that, seeing stocks move like that, I mean, it was it was one of those things that I saw coming if Donald Trump did win because he is, quote unquote, a businessman, financial guru. He talks a lot about, you know, decreasing taxes for a lot of people, allowing them to use their money to invest in stocks. He talks about a lot of uh, bringing, you know, companies back to or well, bringing the U.S. companies back, things like that. So I feel like people see Donald Trump as someone who is going to put the U.S. in a positive financial situation. And I think that is a big part of why the stock market moved the way it did. Um, I uh, also... Go ahead. I don't think I've ever heard anyone call Donald Trump a financial guru. I know no. that he owns a lot of real estate, but I don't think finance is his, is his you know, his forte. Yeah, I, I guess more like businessman. Right. Not not really a financial expert or financial guru. Uh, I'm just thinking about like his the way he moves about his businesses, how he is strategic when it comes to filing for bankruptcy. When it, I don't know how well his businesses are doing. Um, not good. I know that I was looking at the DJT, uh, you know, it's on the stock market. Yeah, he's actually yeah that's, his, a lot that's of his stock, right? Yeah, but he's actually losing a lot of money on it per year. Uh, I don't remember what exactly his profit margins was, but I know that it was negative and it was severely negative because mm -hmm. uh, I, I was looking at whether I should invest in it. But then when I saw the profit margins, that's what stopped me from doing it. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's soaring <laughs> because of, you know, him getting elected and everything. But yeah, I don't. Yeah. Yep. Well, I mean, maybe not the businessman. Like people are, people may not be saying that. Maybe that's just my misinterpretation um, of who Donald Trump is and how well he is of a, as a businessman. Um, one thing that is surprising, though, is the way Tesla moved. Because we know Donald Trump is big oil, big gas. He is not big energy and um, renewable resources and using electricity to. But I feel like. <laughs> Prior to the election day, Elon Musk was very strategic in uh, rooting for and befriending Donald Trump. I don't know if it was some ulterior motive or if he actually you know, believes in a lot of what Donald Trump is saying, but I imagine Elon Musk saw that Donald Trump being on his side could definitely help Tesla as a business, right? Maybe he's thinking he can sway Donald Trump's opinion on um, electric car companies and things of that nature. So I don't know, because we know Donald Trump is not big on energy and renewable resources. Go ahead. You know what's funny? Mm -hmm. I think it should be the other way around. I personally think Elon Musk is the most powerful person in the world right now. Honestly, with... Um, the businesses that he has between Neuralink, between, what is it, Starlink, and also um, Tesla. Mm -hmm. 
is getting pretty crazy as of right now. Um, and the thing is, he has these businesses separate. So, and I, f I feel like he's going to change the world with some of these things. Like he's putting chips in people's in people's brains. Yeah, he's definitely changed the world. Go ahead. Yeah, he, he's changing the world. And I, I don't feel like you can accidentally become the richest man in the world. No, nah, not at all. So that he's doing, he, yeah, he, he's doing something right. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what's going on between him, uh, Trump and Elon Musk, but I, man, I, I think they have something planned for sure. Whether it's good for us, I don't know. But I think something big is, is is happening. What do you think about Tesla as an investment? I don't like Tesla as an investment. Because for one, I don't understand why Tesla is soaring right now. Because I can see it soaring under a, a Democratic uh, presidency. Because, you know, they're more for um, mandating electric cars. But with Donald Trump, I know his last term, he was against it. So I, I just don't understand what exactly is going on right there. If I'm being, uh, if I'm being honest, I just feel like I think that Elon Musk is just trying to win Donald Trump's favor. That's what it seems like to have a Republican president who is also in favor of electric vehicles and renewable energy. And I like that being a source. That's, that's what, that's where I think it's going, but I don't know. What it, what it has Donald Trump said toward in the benefit of electric vehicles, though? That it has yet to be said. I feel like him just having and speaking positive things about Elon Musk has been what's been driving Tesla so far. Like, he hasn't mentioned a lot about um, keeping the, like that, I think it's $7,000 tax credit for having an electric vehicle. He was trying to get rid of that uh, in his last presidency. He hasn't necessarily mentioned getting rid of that this term. Um, and that could be the start of it, right? That could be the start of Donald Trump changing his mind about how he feels about electric vehicles. I don't know. I just feel like it's all strategic on Elon Musk's end. Um, but only time will tell what Donald Trump says about electric vehicles and how Tesla will move with a Republican president who, again, was against this just four years ago. <laughs> so, it yeah. doesn't make sense to me. So yeah. let me ask you something. Is that mm -hmm. enough for you to um, invest in Tesla? I think Tesla is an investment that I will put some money in because I'm interested to see what will happen with this relationship between Donald Trump and Elon Musk. Um, and right now, because Tesla is the only publicly traded stock that Elon Musk has, well, that's owned by Elon Musk. I don't think there's like Starlink and stuff. That's not publicly traded yet. It's just Tesla. I feel like I want to be invested in something. And this is pure me purchasing based off of the relationship between Donald Trump and Elon Musk. I feel like that that is what's going to make Tesla move. Um, yeah. And I feel like it could also just be, I don't know, more, maybe more money towards Tesla. Maybe people's sentiment of Tesla might even change. I don't know. But it won't be a ton of money, but I do want to see where it goes. And I'm interested to see what happens with this individual who was against companies like Tesla, but has now befriended the CEO of said company. Like, what happens so next? Do you see yourself buying an option or are you uh, acquiring shares of Tesla? I think I would rather buy shares. I don't want to try and time this. Yeah, I think I'll just buy shares and just see what happens in the, over the next four years. Um, yeah, because there's no telling what can happen. If I buy a long-term option that expires next year, I could, you know what I mean? I don't know what's going to happen with yeah. Tesla. But I think that purchasing shares of Tesla will at least put me in a spot to where my money won't reach zero. You know, we know how gruesome options can be <laughs> if, uh, if you're not trading in the right direction. So, oh, another one that I want to ask. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
I think uh, um, an investment. investment. I think an investment that I'm more that I'm more comfortable with um, is probably Bitcoin. No, I know sure. that uh, Donald Trump is he's on the the people that are invested in crypto. He's on their side right now. He's saying that he wants you, the U.S. to be the prime source of, of Bitcoin. He's talking about putting up, um, and that's what this is also what makes me feel like he doesn't really understand it that much because i know bitcoin is about to not be able to be mined after after a while right mm -hmm. so why he's talking about putting up more plants and stuff to, to mine bitcoin but once once it's all mined that's it so then yeah. what like what use do we have of those of those plants after that and they i don't know there might be something that i'm not understanding but when i hear that it's just like okay he's just kind of like trying to be on on their side you know it was a way to look good in pre in, in presidency and then um also he probably made a big investment in bitcoin I, I know they showed a video of him going to a restaurant and purchasing some burgers with bitcoin so that means that that that's a signal that he's in it in some type of way and i i'm pretty sure with him you know he has a lot of money i'm sure that it's it's in a big way also so there's no telling how much money he's about to make he's probably inside trading all day to be yeah. honest yeah. You buy Bitcoin, you get in presidency, and then you're like, hey, we're going to make Bitcoin the prime. Like, come on, man. Yeah. I think <laughs> another question there is if Bitcoin moves the way it does, will other coins follow, right? Other, um, like Ethereum. Because that being like the next most popular coin will that follow along with bitcoin because they're already talking about well we've said this in episode before they're already talking about etfs for ethereum um and ethereum is a lot cheaper than bitcoin now so is that going to be the next uh you know is that going to follow bitcoin's tracks or uh, with, ethereum with is actually, go ahead ethereum is actually up more than bitcoin right now ethereum in the past five days is up 32 percent. that's crazy 32%? Yeah, it's at 3,200 right now. Bitcoin moved from like 70 to, let me see. I can check right now. So Bitcoin in the past five days moved up 15%. Ethereum made up, went up 32%, which is twice the amount percentage-wise. So, so if you had money in Ethereum in the past five days. Huh? I said, do you think Ethereum would be a good investment? I damn sure think that Ethereum is, <laughs> okay. a, is a good investment. Yeah, I, I've been thought Ethereum is a good investment. For sure. I just didn't know if Probably. it was only Bitcoin. Because, I know, we talked about um, some of those altcoins. And literally the only coin that's not an altcoin is Bitcoin, right? Everything else is altcoin. And we did – well, I mean, we mentioned before that altcoins are just like, nah, don't touch them because they – a lot of them just they're rug pulls, right? Ethereum, though, I think is one of those altcoins that is a lot more reputable, a lot safer than you would, what you would say, like you know, a Dogecoin or something like that. So, yeah, I think if if you're seeing Bitcoin as a price that's far beyond your reach, like eighty thousand dollars, which <laughs> that's a lot of money for one coin, you know what I mean? But Ethereum is around a price <clears throat> that people can still get in and, and see those percentage gains. You know what I mean? So you know how my mind works. I feel like the price means nothing. The price, the price means or, nothing. Okay. The percentage is what we're looking at is what we're looking for. That's what I mean though. Like if if the per percentage of Ethereum can move faster than a percentage of Bitcoin moves. Like Bitcoin going from eighty from seventy thousand to eighty thousand, it moved more, right? As far as price than Ethereum. But you could have made more money on Ethereum because percentage wise, Ethereum moved more. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I I don't I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not sure if that's because of the price though, that it moved like that. 
Okay. I think it's more of like a market. I think it's more of like a market cap thing, and not right. like a how much one coin is worth. It's kind of like because in that case, I could say Apple is two hundred dollars. So I feel like that can move more than Ethereum because Ethereum is three thousand dollars. But that's you know like, what I'm saying. Yeah. No, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But you think Ethereum is going to move or could possibly move in a positive way with, with Donald Trump being such a Bitcoin advocate. That's what I'm asking too. Yeah. I think that he's about to drive it up even more. I thought that Bitcoin was going to drive up regardless because of the super cycle, mm -hmm. but yeah, every four years it's the fourth year. And usually during the winter it, it revs up. But now that, now that, Donald Trump is going to the Bitcoin conferences, speaking on it, talking about he wants the U.S. the U.S. to be the the prime provider or whatever word he used. Yeah, I think Bitcoin is about to go crazy overnight. Bitcoin went from seventy five to eighty thousand. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So so far we got Tesla as a watch item based on strictly the relationship between Donald Trump and Elon Musk. See what happens there. That's going to be interesting. We have Bitcoin, of course. We talk about Bitcoin constantly. And that being a, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the future. A lot of people doubted it. You know, they didn't know what was going to happen. They wanted to wait for it, whatever the right. case may be. But following Bitcoin, we also have Ethereum, which is also uh, potentially a very good investment, given a president who is for cryptocurrency. Uh, another question that I have. So Trump is now putting a lot of tariffs or plans to put a lot of tariffs in place. Is that going to affect things like NVIDIA, like AMD? And will that also affect companies like U.S. based semiconductor companies like Intel? Because Intel has been struggling lately. Right. But will we you think I think personally that might be somewhat of a shift. Um, but. Still, time will tell. NVIDIA has been dominating the semiconductor market. Um, AMD has been doing pretty well as well. Intel, though, has not been doing too high, at least as far as the stock price. Right? Intel, the company, has been doing well, but the stock price has not uh, been moving nearly as much as the other two competitors. But now that we have a president who is wanting to back us-based companies he wants to slow down on the reliance of other companies especially when it comes to semiconductors what do you think a company like intel is going to do uh, or has the potential to do with donald trump as president so as far as intel i haven't really been following intel like that mm -hmm. but um i i don't see how this is going to work especially with us trying to develop ai and I, I feel like I feel like him putting these tariffs in place are going well increasing the uh the taxes on it. I feel like um I feel like this is gonna hurt us in that in that area, mm -hmm. to be honest. I don't know what's gonna come of it. <laughs> but we either have to find something here that's equivalent or yeah, I I don't know what's gonna happen with that. Yeah. Yeah. No telling. I think a lot of it is we'll, we'll just one of the going to be one of those things where we'll, we'll have to see it when it happens, how it will affect the consumer. Because um, mm -hmm. a lot of times with these increases, someone ends up paying the bill for it. Right. If it's not if the company has to spend more money to receive the goods and they have to raise their prices. You know what I mean? It, it could be as simple as that. Uh, so, yeah, we. I think this thing is going to be a very interesting year for the stock market, period. Um, but yeah, I, I do think that if you are looking to invest in the stock market, some of the sectors that I think could be good to look at. I know that Trump is a big backer of banks, U.S. banks, right? Yeah. So the Wells Fargo. You see, that's another thing that doesn't make sense. Because how can you be a backer of banks and a backer of crypto? I feel like they contradict each other because the, the, the whole point of Bitcoin is for it to be peer to peer. No middleman. The bank is a middleman. That's very true. Maybe there is 
some talk or some conversations happening about, <laughs> something doesn't make sense about, about like adopting bitcoin as <laughs> i mean i think even with them allowing etfs of bitcoin right that was already a step towards uh i don't know if that's necessarily grabbing control of bitcoin or being able to kind of regulate it not really it's just i don't know I don't know because we i think we we, we'll definitely have to like get a bitcoin expert on here to further explain because i want to hear more about the the future of bitcoin with it's yeah and it's it's weird because they turned they turned a currency into an investment vehicle yeah it's because that's all the crypto is a digital currency mm -hmm. and what we did well, what America has done is they turned it into a way for people to invest, put it into their 401ks, their 403bs, into their Roth IRAs. This is, it's weird, man. These are weird times. It's very weird. <laughs> it's very interesting. Um, so let me ask you something. So, would you Would you tell people to invest right now? Would you say that people should invest right now should they continue so i know that markets are at an all-time high i know bitcoin just well it, it's this week it hit a all-time high like what would you tell people to do right now my advice is to i don't think i would ever tell people to not invest right i don't think i can that's i think what what i recommend what i've always recommended is dollar cost averaging the purpose of dollar cost averaging is to invest knowing that you will potentially invest when the market is high, but also when the market is low. That's the point is to get off the sidelines, start, right? Um, and I think that now is the time to revisit your investments. Now is the time to make sure that you don't want to go and make any changes to the investments that you have or your future investments if you want to shift those around. But yeah, I think people should definitely still invest because like you said just now, these are very interesting times, And but I think there's a lot of potential in investing right now. Um, a lot of things are at all time high. And if things do, slide if they do you know retrace or go back then the investment still continues you're just investing now when the market has its pullback if it does have its pullback you'll invest then because i don't see the market lower than what it is now in the next five years so you know what i mean me telling someone to wait is like telling them to time the market don't invest right now. Invest when the market goes down, when it's a better time. Time in the market is always came for me. So if that investment right now goes down, cool. Because we've seen downturns and we've seen it when people panic sell, right? They The market goes down and they rip their money out the market. And then the market shoots right back up. And now there's like, man, dang, I knew I should have kept it in. Or... You know what I mean? Like that regret. So, nah, man, I think dollar cost averaging, no matter what. Um, yeah, get off the sideline. That's, that's, that would be my thing. What about you, though? What is, what's your sentiment on, on telling people to invest right now? One thing that these times have taught me is I don't dollar cost average. And I didn't realize that I didn't dollar cost average until recent. So what I do is every time I get paid, I put money into this in, into something, but I look for what's down. I never invest in anything that is at an all time high, and I've never done that. I I was thinking of it as dollar cost averaging because I'm always putting money in no matter where the market is, but more specifically, I'm putting into the things that are down every time I get paid. That's not dollar cost averaging. That's it's not even time in the market, really. It's, it's just diversity. kind of 
is diversifying to yeah it, it mainly is diversifying mm -hmm. and it's also my own strategy that i came up with and it were it's been working for me yeah and, I, and that's what i'm that's what i've noticed too about your strategy and that's the question that i want to ask so lately what have you been putting your money in that has what have you seen that's down right now google Google is not at its all time high. Right now it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So like that's the last thing that I put my money into was Google. But um every yeah. what happened? I was gonna say, I, well it's not far from it. The all time high for Google stock price is one Google, Google just got there though. That just happened when uh Donald Trump got in office. Google yeah. was was hovering around 160 something. Yeah. Google yeah. just did this. Mm -hmm. Google, Google's up 5%. It's up $8 um in the past 5 days. The past uh, 5 days, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Man, you might need to coin that, bro. What would you call it? That's that is a that's a <laughs> I mean, some move, man. you barely buy low, sell high, because you don't sell when it gets its all time high. You just buy when it's low. Yeah, I just buy. I buy the dips every time I get yeah. paid. I buy the dips. Buy the dip. Yeah. Nah, that's not a, that's not a bad strategy at all. You know, the only thing I do it is with reputable companies. I don't do right. it with any. Yeah, I I only do it with big name companies, blue chip stocks, things that are on the top of contributions to. Um, to like uh like QQQ and S and P five hundred, the top stocks. I'm not, I'm not investing in in speculative stuff. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, man. I think yeah. that we should uh think that we should um, look into maybe possibly generating a list of 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 stocks that are potentially not at its all time high. We can call that the the dip list or something. I don't know the buy the dip list and the dip list. That sounds a little weird. Maybe not the dip list, <laughs> but <laughs> something along the lines of Sounds. something like, hey, you know, we could the dip playbook. <laughs> the dip playbook. <laughs> nah, but I think that that'll be a good, um, a good look, though, because we could because people sometimes wonder what should they invest in, you know, and though we are not financial advisors, um, and our financial educators, it's important to also learn about what 52 week high means, right? And even what dollar cost averaging means and the potential positive and negative effects of dollar cost averaging. You know what I mean? So yeah, I think it's important for people to understand that stuff too. Um, but it is. yeah, yeah man, we might have some good information Go ahead. This is some this is some good information though. No, for but sure. I, I I think we should definitely create that list and we should have a whole episode on it. I'm with it. On the list that okay, the investors playbook. Yeah. List. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. We doing it, we doing it for the for the view for the viewers, bro. They definitely want to know, man. Like cause people ask me, you know, what should I jump into right now? And I just tell them the safest one is like SPY, QQQ. You can't really go wrong with those as long as you're not doing like a one-time buy-in. And then, I mean, even with that, we see the stock market always what continues to go up. So, um, but it's not going to move as fast as these individual stocks will, right? The potential for for uh, for more gains will come with these individual stocks like Google like Tesla, like NVIDIA, the ones that are driving the ETFs, you know, so. Right, so what y'all need to do is join the group, and of course, yeah. we'll drop a list. But hey, yeah. this was a great one. Definitely, definitely good stuff, conversation, man. man. Um, great as always, like, we, we do have a new, well, you know, we have a new elected president. Come January, we will officially have, you know, a new president of, the United States of America for the next four years. People just make sure that you're staying on top of your finances as always. Like don't don't stick your head in the ground and pretend like it's not happening. 
Don't, you know, run from it. Just take control of it. Don't let it control you, right? You have a couple things in your control. Your finances should be one of them. So, yeah, we appreciate y'all always listening. Uh, Cornell, anything you want to say to him before we slide? No, I think this was a good one, man. Sure. All right, y'all. Peace out. Peace.